بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه أما بعد اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين وبعد يا مرحبا أهلا وسهلا وجزاكم الله خيرا الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has completed our deen, our way of life, and completed His favor upon us. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in His noble book, Al yawma akmadtu lakum deenakum. وأتمنت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا. That on this day I have perfected for you your religion and completed my favor upon you. And I'm pleased that you have Islam as your religion. اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم. This is tremendous that on this day I have perfected for you your religion. الحمد لله in the Deen of Islam. We have guidance for all aspects of our lives. And it's a deen, yani, it's a way of life. It's a better translation than religion. Because when one hears the word religion, there may come to their mind a very restricted understanding. But we have guidance in all aspects of our lives, in every single aspect of our life. And this is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a tremendous ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bidnilahi ta'ala, we want to look at some very affordable health care options, inshallah ta'ala. We want to look at some very affordable health care options and some very affordable treatment. Bidnilahi ta'ala, a treatment that is affordable to those who are poor, likewise affordable to those who are rich. It is a treatment that those who are far from the main cities and urban centers, they will have access to. And a treatment that those who are in the metropolitan areas will also have access to. Walilahilhamd. Before getting into that specifically, we we would like to just remind everyone of the importance of seeking medical treatment and how this doesn't contradict anything from our religion in any which way, shape, and form, but rather we are encouraged to do so. And Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, inna rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, on the authority of Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that, Verily, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Inna Allah azza wa jal, haythu khalaqa adda, khalaqa addawa, fatadawu. And this hadith has been collected by Imam Ahmad, and it's a hadith that has been graded by Hassan, by Imam al-Albani. Where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said what translated means, and that verily Allah Azza wa Jal, when He creates, when He created the disease, He created the treatment, the cure for that disease. So therefore, seek medical treatment. So therefore, seek medical treatment. 
seek medical treatment, yani take medicine, take medicine. And this is very important because you have some individuals who have a misunderstanding as relates to this and they feel that it is somehow praiseworthy to unnecessarily suffer and endure things in which they have medical treatment by way in which they could utilize as as bad, as causes, as a means. But as we know, the one who cures, then it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who will cure an individual from any ailment in which they have, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These things that we have from medicine and medical treatments, and these are from the means. These are from the means, from the asbab, by way in which it is incumbent upon us that we take them, that we take the asbab. But the tawfiq is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The cure is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is incumbent as Muslims that we understand this so that our hearts stay constantly connected unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we realize that these things are what they are and they're just a means. They're just a means. But by way of that, our hearts are not connected to them. But our hearts are connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ala kulli hal, there comes another hadith an Usama bin Shariq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu قال, he mentioned that an Arabi, that a Bedouin, Al Arabu, قال, Ya Rasulullah, that he mentioned, O Messenger of Allah, Ala Natadawa, should we not take medicine? Or should we not but take medicine? They're asking. We should take medicine. Correct? To which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called, Naam, ya ibadullah, tadawu, fa inna Allah lam yadha da'an illa wadha lahu shifa'a illa da'an wahida. Qalu, ya Rasulullah, wa ma huwa? Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, الهرم رواه الترمذي وصححه الالباني. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said when he was asked this question and should we not but take medicine? In other words, we should take medicine, correct? The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said yes. He said, O slaves of Allah, take medicine, seek medical treatment. O slaves of Allah, take medicine and seek medical treatment, because verily Allah has not put a disease except that he's also put forward a cure. Naam, لِكُلِّ دَاءٍ دَوَاء For every disease there is a cure. For every disease there is a cure. Those who know it, know it. Those who don't know it, don't know it. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi goes on to say what translated means, for Allah has not put down a disease except that he has also put down his cure except for one disease. Except for one disease. There's no cure for it. قالوا, they said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, what is it? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Al-Haram. Al-Haram. Wal-Haram, huwa da'af, bisarb al-kibr al-sin, wal-amraad. Al-Haram, it is sickness that is related to old age. It is sickness that is related to old age. Naam, or weakness, that is related to old age. And amrad, a shaykhukha, and the sicknesses of old age that come with age, when one gets old in age, naam, these type of ailments, these type of sicknesses and the like, then there is no cure for them. فَلَيْسَ لَهُ دَوَاءَ There is no cure for the likes of these things, naam. So therefore, it is incumbent that we seek for medical treatment. And the ulama they mentioned, wala farq, and this is a very important point. The ulama they mentioned, there is no distinction fi tadawi bayna an yakuna lil amrad al that 
there is no difference in seeking medical treatment for those sicknesses that are internal, right? Those sicknesses that are internal. For those sicknesses that are internal, then a lot of times we don't have to debate about this. People understand you should seek medical treatment. But also, the ulama they mentioned, well, aqliya. Also, those sicknesses that are mental in nature, psychological sicknesses, shall also seek treatment for the likes of these things. And this is very important because it is sad, but there are many from our community, right? And whatever the kuffar they do and they're upon, that's that. We don't want to focus on that. We want to focus on our community, community of Muslims. There are many in our community, and when I say our community, I mean Muslims. And I want that to be made known. Because we have too much foolishness going on when people are using phrases like this, but they mean a particular set of individuals who share a shared yani, ethnicity and so on and so on. That's foolish. This is foolish. Allah Ta'ala says, Verily, the, the believers are brothers. So when I say our community, I mean Muslims. That's what I'm talking about, Muslims. Naam. Whether you're white, whether you're black, whether you're Arab, whether you're Ajam, I don't care. You're Muslim, that's what I'm talking about. That's clear? Right. So, there are many in our community that when it comes to psychological sicknesses, they act as if they don't exist. They try to sweep in them under the rug and bury them as if they don't exist. And this is not correct. These things also require treatment. Those, those type of issues require treatment. If a Muslim went through a traumatic experience, do we think that there's no post-traumatic stress syndrome for that person? Then they're supposed to just deal with it, right? They're, they're going, they suffered a traumatic experience. They need proper treatment. And this is something that I encourage those who are interested in the like of this to give some concern to studying the, this particular science. Why? Because we need Muslims who first and foremost have good religion, good religion upon the Sunnah. Now, I mean, I, and and it's, it is sad that I have to say that, but I have to say that, that's upon the Sunnah. Why? Because if they're not upon the Sunnah, they can't have good religion. Okay, let's just be frank about the situation and blunt. If they don't have good religion, I mean, excuse me, if they don't have, if they're not upon the sunnah, then we can't say they have good religion. Now, good religion meaning a person upon the sunnah, a person who's upon the sunnah, a person who's striving to do and to uh, deal with individuals as relates to this particular affair based upon the kitab and based upon the sunnah and whatever it may exist from that particular science from yeah, the, the reality of what helps people in those particular situations. Now, al kulli hal they have to specialize in this because it's unfortunate, but when Muslims fall into the like of these situations, they don't have trained professionals who are Muslims, who are religious, who have good religion, to, to talk to and to deal with. So they get a lot of bad advice because they, they, they're going to kuffar. Kuffar telling them stupid stuff, right? Like some of the, uh, what we have heard, some of the kuffar psychiatrists and psychologists and therapists and so on and so forth will tell the Muslim sisters, uh, well, maybe, you know, you're feeling like this because you, you, uh, wearing these dark colors, right? Uh, brighten up your wardrobe, you'll feel better. You're wearing this, you, you're covering up all of your skin, expose your skin, get some vitamin D from the sunlight through your skin and so on and so forth and make you feel better and make your mood, enhance your mood and so on and so forth. So what kind of advice is this? You're telling the Muslim woman, go ahead, go ahead, commit sin. Take off your hijab, take off your, 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 your garments, go outside, frolic around in the sun, you'll feel better. You'll feel better by way of sin, through sin. That's how it can make you feel better. No, sin is going to make you feel worse. Sin is connected to ailments. Connected to ailments. Ma'am. But they get bad advice. But what do we expect if they go into a kafir? The one who is deprived of something, they are incapable of giving it. 
Naam. So it is incumbent that the Muslims take some concern in this. They take some serious concern in the likes of these things so that we can have trained professionals who are Muslim to give people good advice. Now, I don't want to go too long on this particular subject, but the same can relate to those people who deal with um, rehabilitation treatments and rehab and so on and so forth. You, you know, if, 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 because the reality is that Muslims, because they do similar filth that the kuffar do, then as a result they suffer from similar problems that the kuffar they suffer from. So those who are engaged in narcotics and engaged in this in alcoholism and so on and so forth, then they suffer from these particular issues. So now that they their bodies have become codependent upon these particular things and they want to get rid of it and so on and so forth and they need some type of rehab, where do we have to send them to? Christians? Who start their meeting with a prayer circle making shirk? What they was, what they would, the reason that brought them in there is better than what they're going to get in that shirk session. Because shirk is the worst sin. Shirk is the worst sin. So you're trying to get, get off of heroin by making shirk. You start your, you start your recovery by making shirk. You end out your, your, your recovery session by making shirk. That can't be the option. That can't be the way, right? So we need programs that address that that a Muslim could go to and is safe. A safe place for a Muslim to get over his problems or for her to get over her problems. And this is something that we can't turn a blind eye to and act like it doesn't exist and stick our heads inside the sand and hope that the storm will pass us by. Because it exists even within our community, it exists and we have to deal with it. Ayla Kulli also whatever the sickness may be meaning neurological neurological so on and so forth why? because the love because the word for disease that as it comes in the hadith then it is general and it will enter into that all of the sicknesses Right? The different types and various sicknesses. And these are just an example. Uh, and from this, Qala Sheikh Abd Aziz bin Baz, Rahimullah Ta'ala, Yajuzun Tadawa, Ittifaqan, that it is permissible to seek medical treatment, and this is by consensus of the Muslim scholars. That it is permissible to seek medical treatment by consensus of the Muslim scholars. Well, in Muslim and yet have in a doctor, the Muslim he can go to the doctor, and a doctor Imrad in Baltaniya go to a doctor that specializes in internal medicine or internal sicknesses, or jarahiya, or one that deals with uh, yani, a surgeon, surgical matters, and so on and so forth, or asuriya, or one that deals with neurological matters, and so on and so forth. Naam, or nahwidalik, or other than that, so that they may what? So that they may. Uh, seek treatment for these particular ailments so that he may treat him for these ailments so that he may treat him for these particular ailments as that which and, 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 and prescribe for him the appropriate medicines and ascribe for him the appropriate medicines al mubaha those medicines that are permissible shar'an inside of the sharia hasba ma ya'rifuhu fi ilm al according and based upon the knowledge of that particular doctor as relates to the the science of medicine bi anna dhalika min bab al akh bil asbab al adiyya because this is from the standpoint of taking the means Taking the yani the means and the causes for a certain thing. Right? This is from the means of doing that. Wala yunafi, and this does not negate at tawakkul ala Allah. This does not negate uh, putting one's trust upon Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Naam. That 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 makes sense. It does not negate it. We have to take the means. We have to take the uh, the asbab. We have to take the means, and we have to take the asbab. Just like everything else that we do in life, we have to take the means, we have to take the asbab for that. So for example, if a person is hungry, you're hungry, right? And you're fully capable of getting up, going to the refrigerator, getting some food, eating it to the end of it, right? 
But you decide, you say, no, I'm going to sit here, and I'm not going to move, and I'm going to put my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is that tawakkul? Is that putting one trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? No, it is not. But rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it obligatory upon us that we take the asbab. That we take the asbab. Naam. The Prophet sallallahu he gave an example of the one who truly puts his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he likened that individual to, to what? What animal? Which animal? The bird. It goes out from his nest when? In the morning. And it comes back at the end of the day with a full belly. But that bird, did he sit in his nest? And just tweet all day? And then that's, no. But what he had to do? He had to get out, fly around, right? Do what birds do. And he come back at the end of the day and he is full belly. Because this is the example of putting our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that we have to take the we have to take the the asbab. Naam, that makes sense? But if, so likewise, when it comes to the likes of these things, then taking medicine is from the asbab and it does not negate one's uh tawakkul upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. So there is no sickness except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down for it a cure. Except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down for it a cure. And those cures, they will only benefit by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now this brings us to some cures, some medical treatment that unfortunately often Many times, under many circumstances, in many situations, we neglect, yet we have access to it. We neglect it, yet we have access to it. When we speak about the medicine of the Prophet wasallam, then we see that the Prophet wasallam, he will use various things for medical treatment. Naam. From those things in which the Prophet wasallam, he will use was ruqya. Ruqya. Naam. And this is something that all of us, bidnilahi ta'ala, have access to. Right? And from those things in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, or that we learn from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that is used as ruqya, is what? Is surah al-fatiha. Naam. Is surah al-fatiha. Now, Every Muslim has access to Surah Al-Fatiha, correct? Every Muslim has access to it. And we, under, and we should understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made certain things a cure for certain things and other things not a cure for certain things, right? So if you're sick, for example, then you want to take something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made that thing effective against that particular ailment. And you want to avoid those things that are ineffective, right? Because Allah has not made that, made that a cure. So for example, if you're sick, right? Uh, let's say you have a headache, for example. So you say, I'm going to rub the table and keep rubbing it to treat my headache. Then we look at you like you're crazy because that's not you know, from the means by way in which Allah ta'ala not make you rubbing the table. As a, as a cause for the, for the headache, right? But a person, he'll go to some type of pain medicine, right? Be it naproxen, be it you know, ibuprofen, whatever the case is, acetaminophen, whatever, right? Um, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made these things effective against these particular set of ailments. So we'll take these manufactured things that they mix all this other stuff in it and, you know, will have bad effect upon our kidneys if you don't, if you take it uh, too much or will have bad effect upon your stomach if you take it on an empty stomach and causes ulcers and all this type of stuff. We'll, we'll, we'll run to that. We'll, we'll take it because it has some effectiveness. It has a track record of having some kind of effect. But at the same time, we don't make ruqya on ourselves. As relates to these things. A lot of people, when you say ruqya, the only thing they're thinking about is to get a jinn out somebody. 
person possessed ruqya. But ruqya is also for medical treatment. It's also for medical treatment. And it is effective. And it is free. And it has what? No side effects. It has no bad side effects. It's not gonna it's not gonna give you ulcer, it's not gonna hurt your kidneys, it's not it's not gonna it's not gonna it's not gonna it has no bad side effects. But yet we neglect it, like we, we don't remember these type of things, ma'am. And it's incumbent that we remember them. Even if you took an Advil, whatever, that's fine. What's what's stopping you from still reciting over that headache? Nothing. It's not gonna hurt you. Correct? So these things are important for us uh, to do. The Fadil to Shaykh Shaykh Abdul Razak and Shaykh Abdul Muhsin al Badr, Hidhamullah Ta'ala, he mentions, he says, Lapadija of his sunnity and Mudahara and Warren min al Athkab wa Adaia, Yushra'u and Yurqa biha al Maribu. He said that there comes inside of the pure Sunnah a number of different types of supplications and uh, Yani adhkar, supplications, yani du'as, you know, English, Englishization of the word, that have been legislated for the sick person to make ruqya on themselves with. And I want to keep stressing this too, that the sick person to make ruqya upon themselves. Now I want to keep stressing that. You make ruqya upon yourself. Because again, it's about strengthening and Reinforcing your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. Now we're not speaking about the permissibility or impermissibility of having someone else recite over you. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about in cases or times where you're incapable of reciting over yourself. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the concept that people have a lot of times that ruqya has got to be somebody else may ruqya on me. Some sheikh, big, yani raqi, so on and so forth, call him from whatever, pay whatever, so he can come recite over me. Ya yeah, salam, you can recite over yourself. Recite over yourself. You're not incapable of doing it. Recite over yourself. Naam. Because at the end of the day, the cure is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The cure is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah ta'ala has not decreed that you'll be cured, then you're not going to be cured. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed that you're going to be cured, you're going to be cured. Naam. So, connect yourself unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not the means by way in which we have to take. That makes sense? Nah. The Shaykh he goes on and he mentions, he says, وَقَدْ جَعْلَهَ اللَّهُ سَبَبًا لِلشِّفَاءِ وَالْعَافِيَةِ Naam. And you see, yani, ulama ahl sunnah they keep mentioning this, they keep reminding the people that what? That Allah has made these things a cause and a means by way in which for, for, yani, for, 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 for cure and for well-being. That Allah has made these things effective for that. Right? So, by reminding people of this, then this is what? This is reinforcing. This is reminding them to connect themselves unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because these things are only effective because who made them a means? Allah. That's it. They're only effective because Allah made them a means to affect that particular thing. That's the reality. Like the hadith in which yani, we open up with. The kulli da in dua. For every sickness there is a cure. Never has a, a, a sickness come down except that Allah has sent down what? The cure. Right? This is yani, of extreme importance that we keep remembering this. Because when we speak about at tawheed al rububiyyah then we always remind, or Ahl Sunnah, naam, always remind that what from the affairs that enter into what is at tawheed al rububiyyah is that Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the arranger of the affairs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala arranges the affairs. So Allah ta'ala decrees who will be sick, who, who would get cured, who would, who would, who would live, who would die, who would be born, who would, who would be prayed over, so on and so forth. All that is by the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed that you'll be sick, then there's no one that can cure you. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed that you'll be cured from that sickness, there's no one who can return to you that sickness. Just like if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed that you're gonna die, no one could keep you alive. If, it's, if, it's been, if Allah Ta'ala has decreed that this one will be born, no one could prevent their birth. Because Allah Ta'ala, He is what? He is the arranger of the affairs. 
All everything is by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So likewise, sickness, health, so on and so forth, all of these things are by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Regardless of the sickness, whether it's a physical sickness, a, a neurological sickness, a, a mental sickness, psychological sickness, so on and so forth, then your ultimate means by way in which you're going to get over that and be able to deal with that pro- appropriately is what is return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then take whatever means are at your disposal. Take whatever means you have at your disposal. Naam. But the Shaykh was on, he mentions, he says, فَأَتَنَاوَلُوا طَائِفَ مُبَارَكَ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْأَذْكَارِ وَأَدْعِيَ He said, inshallah, we're going to take some, we're going to take meaning, we're going to look at some of these adhkar, some of these supplications, some of these du'as, right? Uh, blessed du'as and supplications that you know, has come in this, in this particular affair. So now we want to look at what? What? you use to recite over yourself. You want to look at some of the things that you use to recite over yourself. And these is just from the from the standpoint of an example. It's not from the standpoint of restriction. So we're not mentioning everything that you can recite over yourself, but just some things that you can recite over yourself. The Shaykh, he mentions, he says, Quran. He said it from the best and the greatest thing in which a person could, the, the sick person could recite over themselves, then it is the opening of the book, it is the, the mother of the book, meaning Surah Al Fatiha. Because Surah Al Fatiha, then it is what? It is, it is a sufficient cure. It is a sufficient cure. Fafi Sahihain. Inside of the Sahihain, Naam, and his hadith, it comes in as Sahihain. What's, what's the two collections of, of authentic hadith as well? Bukhari and Muslim. Bukhari and Muslim. Naam. So this hadith, it comes inside of Al Bukhari from the hadith of Abi Sa'id al Khudri. Fibab wa Tib. Inside the chapter of medicine. Naam, the chapter of medicine. This chapter that we're going over uh, this weekend. Anna Rahban. من أصحاب الرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم انطلقوا في السفر سافروها that there was a group from the companions of the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم ورضي الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين who they sought out or they went out on a journey in which they were traveling they embarked upon a journey in which they were traveling حتى نزلوا بحي من أحياء العرب until they yeah, he decided to rest, to take rest for the night at a district, for lack of a better term, or an area from the areas of, of the Arab. So they asked them to give them residence for the night, to let them stay the night in a particular area. Ma'am, to let them stay the night in a particular area. And if anyone could remember how things used to be in the past, right? You would have to seek permission, and, and likewise, you know, you 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 you're in a place, you happen to come upon an encampment, to come upon a town, a small village, or what have you. You have to ask permission to stay there. It wasn't, you know, like you just can make a reservation and stay at the local inn. You had to ask permission to stay there for the night and to be given and treated with hospitality, so on and so forth. Lam. So they ask for permission. And in this, is, there's a lot of benefits inside of this hadith, but from it, it shows you what the edib of the Muslims. Shows you the edad of the Muslims, that the Muslims are people of manners. They're not people of yani, of no manners, people of no class. They're people of manners. So when they came, they asked for permission to stay, to stay the night. Fa'abo. So the people they said no, they denied them. Fa'abo. And you yifuhum. They denied them that they can stay there for the night. Right? Now, when the Muslims were denied this, and some people may say, well, I feel this was a right of mine. I'm a traveler, I'm a visitor. I come upon your land. I come upon your, your, your encampment, upon your village, whatever the case is. I ask to stay the night. You're supposed to let me stay the night. I feel like that's my right. You don't let me stay the night? And then they do what? Then they cause ruckus. They make, they make problems. They make disturbance. But this is one, one benefit we get from this hadith is that the Muslims, we are not people of ruckus. We're not people of disturbance. We're not people that cause a disruption to, to, to daily life. So just from this standpoint alone, then we realize 
And, and again, a person may say, well, hey, that, that was, they're right, right? They feel they're entitled to stay right. This right here alone is, is a refutation of those people who take to the streets and demonstrations, causing ruckus, causing confusion, disturbing the natural flow of things, the natural flow of the everyday life. Why do they do it? Because they have grievances over what they call rights that are entitled to them. This is not the manner to go by doing this type of stuff, right? It's not the manner that those things are alleviated and cured. And anyway, so what happened? Did, did, did this group of Sahaba, did they run up in arms and, you know, complain and start shouting and yelling at them and arguing with them and so on and so forth? No, they didn't. They just, okay. They accepted it and they, and they went. They accepted it and they went. Uh, and, they, and, and they went away from their, their encampment, you know, to an area that was a general area that, that no one could claim is theirs and so on and so forth, so as to not infringe upon their rights or to be disrespectful. So they went to a neutral place and, and, they, and they set up camp there. They set up camp there. They respected that they didn't want to uh, yani, have them for the night. So they said, okay, and they went and they set up camp somewhere else. And in that too is what is tremendous. It's tremendous. Because what? Because it's from the way of the Muslims that we have integrity. We we need we need something. We ask we ask for some some help, some assistance. You don't want to help us. You don't want to aid and assist us. No problem. No problem. Right? We put our trust in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. We go do our own thing. We're gonna do our own thing. No problem. We need help right here. You want help? Okay. We go we go make our own. No problem. Because we're gonna put our trust in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and do what we need to do to accomplish what we need to accomplish. Asking you is just the means. By way in which of accomplishing that. You don't want to help us? It's fine. You're not the only means by way in which that, that thing is accomplished. So we go do our own thing. No problem. No ruckus, no nothing. We go do our own thing. Because you see the izzah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he bestows upon the Muslims when they have this type of integrity. Right? Because of course this type of integrity it stems and it emanates and it springs out from strong iman. Proper iman. Now. So they went and they just made their own encampment away from those people, right? So the the leader of that particular encampment or district or whatever the case you want to call it, that village, the leader of those people, he got bit. He got bit by a snake. A snake had bit him. Naam. Fa'asawlahu bi kulli shayt. So they sought out the BP, meaning the people of his village. They sought out all kinds of treatment for him. They was looking all kinds of things to treat this snake bite that we, which he had, but nothing helped him. Nothing benefited him. Nothing that they brought benefited him. Now, so some of them they said, if you were to go to those group of people, نعم, الرهب, الذين قد نزلوا بكم لعله أن يكون عند عند بعضهم شيء. They said maybe you maybe we should go to those people who يعني had asked to stay and but we didn't let them stay. Yeah, bring in commentary, right? Um, and they took encampment over there at that particular place. Perhaps one of them has something that can benefit him. <coughs> so they came to them, and they said, They said, Oh, yani, group of people. Inna Sayyidina, they said, Verily, our the leader, our leader, he has been big. Fa'asayna. Af one. Fasa'ina. Fasa'ina. Two very different meanings. فَسَعِينَا مَعْذِرًا فَسَعِينَا لَهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ لَا يَنْفَعُهُ شَيْءٍ So we tried everything, but nothing helped them. فَهَلْ عِنْدَ أَحَدٍ فَهَلْ عِنْدَ أَحَدٍ مِنْكُمْ شَيْءٍ So the one of you got something? فَقَالَ بَعْضُهُمْ نَعَمْ وَاللَّهِ So some of them said, yeah, by Allah, إِنِّي لَرَاقٍ Verily, I'm a reciter. Meaning that uh, I, I yani, treat people by reciting over them. ولكن والله لقد اصطفى لا والله لا لقد اصطفناكم لقد اصطفناكم فلم تضيفونا he said verily I'm a rock he said but by Allah he said but 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 by Allah we asked you people to give us lodging for the night and y'all refused 
We ask you people to give us lodging for the night, and y'all refuse. Right? And this shows you what the is of the Muslims. They were turned away, went and did their own thing. No problem. No problem. You see? Now these people need something from them. So now who's at the upper hand? The Muslims. The Sahaba. Now they got the upper hand. Right? So they said, look, by Allah, we asked you people to give us residence for the night. And y'all refused it. Right? So this is not to proverbially throw salt inside the wound, but just to establish with them how things are going to go down now. We asked you people for a favor, you didn't want to give us a favor. No problem. Now you need something. So, now that you need something, this is how it's going to go down. For lack of a better term. This is my colloquial exp- uh, commentary. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, he said, He said, I'm not going to recite over y'all until... We come to an agreement on fair wages that's going to be paid for it. Naam. You see that is now? Subhanallah. Naam. Fasalahuhum ala qatir min al-ghadim. Min al-ghanim. So they agreed, they came to an agreement of a fair price of a, of a, of a certain amount of, of cattle, for a certain amount of like any sheep and goat and that, like, like that, right? From Qalab. So once they came to that amount, so then they went back, they went back and they got their, their leader. Naam. Faja'ala. Yet fulu wa yaqra'u. And we're gonna to come to this inshaAllah ta'ala, and it's a very important point, and this is a part of yani, the ruqya. Naam. So then he started to, 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 yani, to spittle, to spittle. Because this is from the Sunnah of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, it's not, not a full spit and not blowing, but like a mixture of the two, right? With a light, with a light, uh, the blowing with a light spittle. And he recited Surah Al Fatiha, meaning over the, the, the place that was affected. And recited, and he, and he said, وَيَقْرَأُ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ. And he recited, yani, all praise and thanks belong to Allah, the Lord of all that exists. Meaning, Surah Al Fatiha. Hatta laka anna ma nashita min aqal. Until the point where he came out like he broke out from the iqal. The iqal, you know how the Arab, right? And, and, and you know how the Arab in the, the Gulf countries, how they wear that black thing on top of the, the ghutra or the shmal. You know that black thing on top of the shmal? Okay, that's called iqal. Iqal. Because traditionally, it was, yani, it, it was a function, it had a function traditionally. Now it become like fashion, right? And you know, it's fine. It's, it's okay. It's nice, right? You know, that's your thing, it's fine, it's nice. Right? Um, now it's like fashion. But traditionally it was it was in Iqbal, it was it was a rope. It was a rope. And what you do with the rope is that you bind two of the camel legs together. So when it's, so when you get the camel when the camel sit down, you bind two of his legs together so it don't run away. Because if you don't bind his legs together, it's gonna run away, it's gonna go somewhere. Right? So that Iqbal, it restricts the camel. The iqal, it restricts the camel. But when you take, but so now the camel is restricted, so when you take the iqal off, the camel will jump up. That makes sense? The camel just jump up, full of energy, because it's been sitting there the whole time, wanting to get up, can't get up. Now you take the thing off, jump up, full of energy. Now I'm tired of saying, I want to get up. So you, so you, so you, you got the imagery in your mind. This is how the leader of that particular place sprung out. After he got to recite it overnight, he sprung up. He sprung up. Also, a benefit from this, from the Iqal, because this, because this links to medicine as well, meaning preventive. Preventive. Is that if you look at the word Iqal, you see, you have a Ain, you have a Qaf, Naam, then you have an Alif, because it's a, it's a Med. Uh, and then you have a lamb right but, so from that particular word what are the original letters the original letters right if you had to figure it out you can say is it a half illa inside there yes yeah, a half illa okay so probably that half illa is not an original letter sometimes it is but a lot of times it's not so if you get rid of the half illa the weak letter the weak letter would be what the alif what does that leave you with? It leaves you with an ayn, a qaf, and a lamb. Right? Ayn, qaf, lamb. Anyone recognize that they heard that word before? Ayn, qaf, lamb. What? Huh? No, no, no. Ayn, a, qaf, l. I don't want to give it away too much. So I'm just doing like the phonetical, you know, phonics. You know what I mean? A, qaf, 
I don't want to give it too much. But now, aql, aql, the aql. What's the aql? It's your intellect, right? So I just, I just want to take a quick, any diversion, real fast for a benefit. The intellect, the aql. Remember, aql. What's the aql? The rope. What is that rope used for? Tie the camel down. What is that? What is tying the camel down? Does what to that camel's movement? It restricts the movement of that camel. It restricts it, right? It restricts it. So what? So now, why do these words come? Why do they come from the same word? Because the aql is what is the intellect, right? So the intellect, a portion of the intellect, should have what? Because what's in common? Because words are not and things are not called things for no reason. That's clear in Arabic. Things are not called things for no reason. The aql restricts the camel. So a person's intellect should do what? I'm not giving the answer. <laughs> it should do what? It should restrict you from harmful behavior. So a person's intellect, a person that has an aql, then his aql is going to restrict him from harm. It's going to restrict him from hurting himself. So for example, if there was a flame there, right? You don't put your hand inside the flame. Why? Because you're intelligent enough to know that that's not a good idea. It's going to hurt yourself. So you don't put your hand inside the flame. But if someone is mentally challenged, right, you find that they don't necessarily, they may not necessarily have this characteristic. So they may do things that hurt themselves. Why? Because their brain is, or their, their act of the intellect is not functioning properly. That makes sense? The intellect is not functioning properly. But if your intellect, but if your intellect functions properly, then it should restrict you from hurting yourself. So how this enters into what preventative medicine? Because if your intellect is working properly, then you won't put yourself in a situation to expose yourself to harm. Right? Right or wrong? Right. But how many sicknesses come as a result of people's actions? Because of what they did. They made bad decisions, now they get sick. You understand? Person made a bad decision, got hooked on heroin, then he needed to get high, he don't care about the needle being dirty, now he put that dirty needle in his vein because he hooked on it, he made a bad decision, he didn't restrict himself from the heroin, so he didn't restrict himself from the dirty needle, that dirty needle was infected with HIV, now he got HIV. So what was the end result, or, high, or what was the, 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 the series of unfortunate events that let him get HIV? He didn't have no, his, 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 his intellect didn't restrict him. From hurting itself. Another word, just another yani for intellect is also called uh, a nuha. A nuha. Naam. Long story short, it comes from the word to prevent something. Ahlu nuha. The people of nuha, intellect. These are people who prevent themselves from those things that will hurt them. From those things that will hurt them. In any event, going back to the 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 uh, the the hadith. Or before that, yeah, let's go back a little bit. It says, so he got up, he recited over him, he said, He got up, or he got up, he got up like he was breaking out, he was breaking out the, yeah, from, from the iqal, breaking the rope, like he jumped up, full of energy. So he got up and he started walking with no deficiency. Naam, the fakodaba a deficiency. Because you think, okay, you get bit, then you're gonna be limping, favoring your stronger side, the side that wasn't bit, that wasn't injured. But no, he got up as if he was he was never bit. Never bit. Naam. But he said, He said, so the, the, the leader, he said, look, give them whatever wage you all agree to pay them. Give it to them. So some of them, they said, Some of them, they said, everybody was there, right? This happened, they said, hey, divide it up, split it up. Split it. Right? But the one, there's so many benefits in this hadith, subhanAllah. So, but the one who recited, he said, He said, I'm not going to do anything until I go to the Prophet. Because he wants to double check. 
he wanted to double check to make sure it was it was okay to make sure it was proper what they had what they had done and this is tremendous this here is tremendous that before we rush to do anything that we first look to see what is the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as relates to this affair. What is the guidance of the Prophet as relates to this affair? What were the Salaf were upon as relates to this particular thing? How much problems that would yani, get us out of if we applied that methodology that we all claim to have. SubhanAllah. In any event, fa they went to the Messenger Sallallahu فَنَذْكُرَ لَهُ أَلَّذِي كَانَ And it was mentioned unto him that which had taken place. فَنَنْظُرَ مَا يَأْمُرُنَا He said, I'm not going to do anything until we go to the Prophet ﷺ. It's mentioned to him what has taken place and we see what he says. We see what he commands us with. Now, that I'm not going to do anything until I go to the Prophet ﷺ, Messenger of Allah ﷺ, and it's mentioned to him what, what had taken place. And then we see what, what, what he commands us to do as relates to it. فَقَدِّمُوا عَلَى الرَّسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. So they went to the Prophet ﷺ, فَذَكَرُوا لَهُ And they mentioned what had taken place. فَقَالَ The Prophet ﷺ, he said, وَمَا يُدْرِيكَ أَنَّهَا رُقِيَ He said, and what will make you understand that this is رُقِيَ Meaning that this is the medical treatment that is, that is done by reciting. He said, أَصَبْتُمْ You have acted correctly. You have acted correctly. اِقْصِمُوا وَضْرِبُوا لِي مَعَكُمْ بِسَهْمٍ He said, so divide it amongst yourselves and allocate for me a portion. Divide it among yourself and allocate for me a portion. Why? Why did they owe the Prophet ﷺ a portion? Why, why was it the right of the Prophet ﷺ to take a portion? It's because what? Close. He's the leader. But what? what but in, huh? Hmm? He's the messenger. Nah, he's the messenger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the right ballpark, he's the messenger. So therefore, well, who taught them Fatiha? That's what I mean. He's the messenger. No, the Prophet said Sam taught him Fatiha. Right? So therefore, he was <coughs> owned. I mean, yeah, yeah, they, owed, they, they owed him something. You know what I mean? And this is what this teaches us really good adab. And it teaches us, Yani, yeah, subhanAllah, good mu'amala in action and in, in, in connection with the people. If somebody, as they say, puts you on to something, right? Someone teach you about something, right? And then you become really successful from it. Then, from the good adab and teachings of Islam, is that what you should you should you should you should, you, should, you, you, you should share with them? They they should share in your prosperity. Not like how the kuffar and people who are not guided are. Someone to tell them about some 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 something, teach them something, teach them how exactly the method of doing it and so on and so forth. Perhaps for no charge, that person go and strike it rich, then he turn around and say, Hey man, you could have did the same thing I did. You knew it first. Matter of fact, you the one taught me. So if you ain't got it, that's on you. It's not on me. Blame yourself. I owe you nothing. See, that's the Kafir mentality. The Muslim is one who he is generous, he is considerate. He considered about the feelings of others. He's appreciative, so on and so forth. And what 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 the best way to show your appreciation than to share with someone? Yani, once Allah Taala has blessed you with some prosperity, share back with them. Subhanallah, you don't want to show me this. Subhanallah, you don't want to put me in that direction. Here, man, it's for you. You see, so many so many yani benefit that come in this particular hadith. فَدَلَّ هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ عَلَىٰ عِظَمَ شَأْنِ هَذِهِ الصُّورَةِ This hadith it points to the tremendous nature, the tremendous يعني, uh, uh, يعني, uh, status of this particular surah, a surah al-Fatiha. وَأَنَّ لَهَا تَأْثِيرَ عَظِيمًا فِي شَفَائِ الْمَرِيضِ And that this hadith it has tremendous يعني, effect, tremendous effects on the curing of the sick. Right? Was zawal illatihi bihnillah and to remove the problem or the sickness by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see that? Keep reminding you, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Faqal Imam ibn Qayyim, Imam ibn Qayyim, he mentioned, inshallah ta'ala, we'll end it with this particular uh, statement from Imam ibn Qayyim. Which shows us yani, the importance of a surah al-Fatiha and how we need to utilize it and don't underestimate its value as relates to treating ailment. 
في التعليق على هذا الحديث إمام ابن القيم رحمه الله تعالى he mentioned in giving commentary upon this hadith the hadith was just we went over فقال أثر هذا الدواء في هذا الداء وأزال he said that this treatment it affected this ailment and it removed it حتى كأنه لم يكن to the point where it's as if it never happened meaning that the person like, like he, it, it removed, the, it removed the, uh, the ailment like it never took place فهو أسهل دواء وأيسر and it is the easiest medical treatment and يعني, the, the, the most accessible the most easiest and accessible it's easy right ولو أحسن العبد التداوى بالفاتحة that is if a person was skilled in seeking treatment by medical treatment by al-fatiha la ara if a person were to do well and to excel and, and if a person was to seek medical treatment by al-fatiha la ra'a laha ta'thiran ajiban fi shifa then they will see amazing effects upon yani for, towards a cure they'll see amazing effects as 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 relates to this and then imam ibn qayyim he brings something from his own personal life which shows he says makathu bi makkah mudda he said i stayed in mecca for a certain period of time wa ya'tarini na'am wa ya'tarini adwa'a wa la ajidu tabiban wa la dawa'a he said, and then I was struck in by uh, some sicknesses. He said, but I couldn't find a doctor and I couldn't find medicine. He said, so I sought medical treatment and I treated myself medically by Surah Al-Fatiha. He was in Mecca. He couldn't find a doctor. He couldn't find medicine. So he treated himself medically by reciting Al-Fatiha. He said, فَأَرَى He said, فَأَرَى لَهَا تَأْثِيرًا عَجِيبًا تَأْثِيرًا عَجِيبًا He said, so I saw amazing effects. I saw amazing effects on, upon me. So he's telling you this. This is like what? His own testimony telling you that, like, listen, I'm telling you, it worked. It happened to me. It works. Now we know it works, right? But the, but remember, no pain. He's stressing the fact that I I I did it myself, and it, and it works upon that which was ailing me. He said, "For kuntu also for dalika lima yashteka element." He said, "So after that, I started to prescribe that for those who complain of pain, those who complain of a certain pain, and I prescribe this for them." For kana kathiron. منهم يبرأوا سريعا. He said, and many from amongst them, many from amongst them who took this prescription and recited the Surah Al-Fatiha upon their ailment, he said, then they got cured rapidly. They got cured fast. They got cured fast. نعم. على كل حال, I want to continue, inshallah Taala, to go over some more things that. Uh, are utilized to recite over the individual who is sick. Uh, but inshallah ta'ala, we'll save that for the next sitting. فَنَكْتَفِي بِهَذَا الْقَدَرِ وَصَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمَ عَلَى نَبِيِّنَا مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَلَى آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ أَجْمَعِينَ وَجَزَاكُمُ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا